Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 11th of August, 2018. And just today in our room, just on my side, I'll identify everyone. We have Elisa, we have Christine, David, Dawn, Ian, Jim, Lila, Marlene, Micheline, Michelle, Reinhard, Selesh, Sheer, Stephanie, Tamas and myself, Karen Newman. And who do you have in your room, Jim? I have Angela, Mark Zinzo, Barbara Maples, and Rain over here. Yeah. Yes. And so coming up, just to do a few announcements, a little housekeeping. Uh, today is a paid webinar. That means that if you're a member of Human Colony and all of these people that are that, that are here in the room are, um, that gives them a, a membership so that they always have access to the paid webinars and to a lot of our uh, projects that we do. For $10 a month, you can be a member of the Hukalo Club and you can find out about that on hukalo.org forward slash webinars and you can join that. Also coming up very soon, next week, just a few days left on the 16th of August through the 21st, we have the third Ascension uh third ascension workshop it'll be in dansville new york and it'll be a fun five days of jim and max and a, a lot of people i think close to 20 people coming uh to do uh galactic reiki workshops telepathy workshops channeling workshops to have channelings with jim and with max and to interact with each other and in nature and there'll be all kinds of fun things and also, too, if you can, go to Amazon.com and look up the book From the Universe with Love, a Lightworker's Workbook. It is from Jim and Max, Jim Charles and Max Rempel, and it is the book that is a compilation of the many channelings of Jim Charles over several years put together in a beautiful book. It is now also available on audio, and you can find that on Amazon.com. Did I miss hey. anything? No, I think you're good. But I wanted to add something to that. I wanted to say thank you for all of you for your very nice comments about the book. I know there's some typographical errors and things of that nature that makes it, uh, for some people, a little difficult to read. But um, it, we're working on correcting those and getting another edition out. But um, the thing is, we got some really wonderful comments and some uh, good reviews, and we're very appreciative of that. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a wonderful book. It's it reads very very well, and you know, just just if you have to avert your eyes from some errors, don't worry about it. They're all done in love. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's love. She said the name of the book was from the universe. With love. Uh, from the galaxy with love. From the, oh, I says, you know what? I'm so sorry. It's from the galaxy with love. Please look it up on Amazon.com. From yeah, the galaxy and, um, with love, a light worker's workbook. Yeah, right. it's also on Kindle as well. So yeah, we have and that Kindle and, uh, I have the Kindle version. I bought that straight away as soon as it came out. It was wonderful. So, all right, very good. And we have our requests in. I know some of you haven't heard what they are, and if there is any more requests, we can take those right now. But also, I'd like to say, if anyone wants to give a blessing, please let me know that too, or okay. let Karen. Um, Barbara, Barbara was going to start with a blessing. Yes. Yes. Here she comes. Here she comes. There she comes. <laughs> okay. Very good. Nakoshiata kashia natia to koshu nuyata ya natia kasha nasia to watayana ya nata kashia nata patia to koshu watatia nata. Yata kosho to huata hia hati oto watiata yana kia ka kokuya tiatawa. Let all people rise to do what they are assigned to do, and let that be a part of their greatest joy. For God is with you and will make your missions joyful, wonderful, and happy. He wants you to enjoy what He has for you so that it may be your highest excitement. Live in God and you will live in joy. Thank you for that. Anyone else on the Google side have a blessing? Go ahead. Anybody else? 
Okay, well, we'll go forward then. Um, just as a reminder, the people that, um, the, the requests were Takur, a dream lord, Elijah, Grendel, Anaga, uh, Serena, or Saina, excuse me, an insectoid and time lords if possible. And um, s s someone is requesting Ish as well. From the YouTube, they're requesting Ish. Oh, and you just said Ish as well. So somebody in the room said ish at the same time. So, so. jinx. <laughs> jinx to the room and jinx to the you Yes. Know, All right. The coke. Okay. Pretty good. I will um yeah. I just want to welcome everybody here and thank you for coming. And I will see who is coming now. Um have a wonderful session, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, much love, Jim. Thank you always. You're welcome. Greetings, I am Elijah. I am only here very briefly, and today, since it's the 11th of the month, which is a royal and spiritual number for me, I came only to give a blessing and a prayer. Not to teach at all, but to just give you some joy and some understanding from the universe. One moment. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you do and all that you are. For anything that may seem like trouble, for you will turn it into a lesson or you will turn it into profit and joy. You will make all things worth living. You will make all things worth enduring. There are some missions out there that are very difficult and others that are not so much. But you will guide through all things what you wish to have done. Enlighten the mind, bring wisdom, honor, and a great example to each bright face. And let them know that they are loved. Let them know they are encompassed by you, your great power, love, understanding, and compassion. I know that in the Bible there are great prayers that include thanking God for your food, thanking God for keeping you out of temptation, thanking God for all the things that earth and this dimension may bring to you, but also giving him blessings for it as well. Rise up and be who you are. I know I say rise up a lot, but a lot of you still haven't. You're still wondering how to rise up. And that is how you will know that you are still working on who you are as an individual. Is because you have not risen up yet. But be of good cheer. God is training and God is bringing positivity to you, and he's bringing opportunities. Please be on the lookout for these opportunities so that you may not miss them. I give you great love from God above. And that is all I really have to say today. But many blessings to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Namaste.
It is the Naga people that wish to speak. I am Saina. Welcome, Saina. Thank you for coming here. Forgive me if I keep my eyes closed, for your dimension is too bright for me. Hmm. We believe that. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your people and, and who you are? I believe we, you have experienced us in your earth past, mm. in the Indian area, area. And Pakistan, Pakistan, Syria, Syria and, and there is echoes coming back to me. We, we had someone logging in and out. I apologize. Not a problem. But if I wanted to hear my voice, I would listen to it later. We'll try to control this. But the thing is, we are a people from a, a reptilian kind of world, but we are not like those reptilians that you see. We are more of a snake-like being that have developed the use of arms and legs. Eventually, we have evolved into a more bipedal people. We wish great friendship with your planet. We wish to be friends with your planet and we send you great energies. Our world is rather dark and we live in the subterranean portions of it and the cave-like places. We do not often sun ourselves like your snakes do, but we live in a darkened planet where the atmosphere is very dense. So the light there is very light, uh, dim, and we do not see very well. So forgive us for not looking at you boldly, for we wish to do so, but it will hurt our eyes. So, are there any questions? Yes, uh, Lila, Lila has a question. Yes. Hi, Saina, my uh, wonderful friend. Uh, right. Yes, uh, I'm sending you my blessing and healing and wish you uh, that you come uh, more often. I don't really know how often you are with my healing work, but I am very, very touched, and I knew that you will come through, so I am really, uh, I am thanking you for that. So can you tell me a little bit, how is my energy at this point doing? Energies increase. You continue to gather energy, as do all those that are working for positive missions. As you move forward, even if you encounter some negativity, if you work through it and overcome it, then great positivity returns in many fold from what it was. You may not realize that your energies improve for it seems subtle to you, but energies are growing. Now, many of you I see are saying, that the earth energies are actually knocking you down and making you feel weak or tired or great fatigue. But when this passes, or when you get used to it, you will recover into a great and magnificent energy that will help you to move forward. All those that are faithful, will gather their energy appropriately. Your energy is fine, my dear. It continues to grow in the healing realm. Uh, I have a second question, General. How the Illuminati are doing? Uh, they, they are, are struggling. Good. Your Illuminati on this planet is struggling, for they wish to rule the world with science, understanding, and knowledge. There are more people turning to spirit, which 
defeats their rule. There are more people turning to spirit and to faith, which brings them into a questionable place. Of course, science and knowledge will always be part of the earth and always be there. But now magic is appearing and many other things that defeats their purpose and the way they want to rule. And so the Illuminati is falling apart. They are trying to reestablish themselves, but it is difficult because they are not getting the support they once had. Yes, there are still places that support Illuminati with all their uh, powers and all their monies, but the greatest of the monies, the cabal, do not support the Illuminati, but support themselves in their ever forward drive to control the world at large in a way that they would have it controlled and not through science or understanding, but through ownership and through manipulation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shir has a question. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. Um, well, my question is more about uh, the deep sea. As, as I understand it, you are on Gaia, living uh, in the sea. Is that correct? There are some portions of our population that have been here for thousands and thousands of years and have not left, but have gone underground or into the sea. That is correct. But they are very few at this time. Our population on your planet dwindles, for they do not wish to stay in a planet which is ever increasingly polluted. I see. Um, well, my question is more about deep sea creatures. I was always fascinating about uh, the sea and what uh, lies, you know, there in the deep. Uh, can you tell us about, there are always rumors and articles about uh, Loch Ness monsters and uh, huge deep of sea course. creatures. Can you maybe tell us about some of them, if any of that even uh, true? Yes, there are those that exist in the deep, deepest realms of your seas, but they are not known because they le live under great pressure. And to, re to live closer to the surface would cause them great pain. The pressure does keep them. <coughs> very low in the water. They do exist, but they do not show themselves to your populace. They are not part of your world in many senses, but are a part of the dark underworld in the bottom of the sea. That is very interesting. I was, I was wondering about that and also about those who do come up even to the upper part of the sea and uh, resurface. And also, what is that they're um, uh, feeling on if they're in the bottom of the sea? Like, is there another food chain for us to discover? It is at the very bottom of the Pacific Ocean that you talk about, a new kind of food chain. And it is that the very depths of the sea, there are many volcanic fissures there, and heat comes through so that they may have survival and grow many different things at that deep depth. So yes, there is another food chain there. Okay. But I'll ask. Yes, you were saying? Mm, I, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking of that particular food chain 
and how unique it is on your planet. I see. And one last question. Um, is it possible for you to speak about what kind of a, a biological mechanism that allows them to be in such high pressures that even the most uh, technological uh, advances in our world cannot reach? Like, can you tell us? It's about evolution, of course. They have evolved to live in the deeper depths because it is safer there. Anyone that comes to the higher portions of the ocean feels great pain and it would seem like they're very angry. It would seem like they were very ferocious. But really, they are only experienced seeing the pain of sun, the pain of the, the relieved pressure, and they must get back to the bottom. Okay, so why are they surfing up? They are trying to... Uh... There, are, there are prophecies for these creatures to reoccur at some point, in some, in some volume, but not to overtake the world, but to actually show people that all things exist. I see. And can I ask how large are you? Like your physical body? My physical body is 10 feet tall. That's really awesome. Well, if you ever looking for people to um, to meet or something like that, to interact with, then I'm all for it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? I have a question. Okay. And you don't identify yourself. Hello, I'm Micheline. Micheline. Yes, Great. hello. I have a question about the people who claim to see Loch Ness monsters, and I'm wondering, would the Loch Ness, because it's so deep within the sea, would it be using a portal to come it, to the surface? It does not use a portal. But at the bottom of that waterways, there's tunnels to the sea. And they come in through the tunnels and are exposed to the light. They do not stay there long. Some sightings have been disproved as hoaxes, but some have not. They do not use vortexes. They live at the bottom of the oceans. The Atlantic has some deep ridges that are perfect for their lifestyle. That is very interesting. Thank you. That was my question. Excellent. Thank you. Much love. So, Much. so, so you, so there's no issue for your people when they come from the bottom of this high pressure uh, ocean to come to the surface without having. Those are a portion of our species that have evolved into that lifestyle. We are from the planet area and have not evolved in that direction. So we are not the same, but that we are relatives to them. Do you understand? Sure. So the ones that live in the ocean do not come up to the surface. Not now. But they will be given the opportunity through technology to come to the surface and be surrounded by a force field so that the pressure will not affect them. Okay, I understand. And, and vice versa, we, we can't really go to see them either. So at this not moment, at this time. It, it's, it's impossible is, to meet them. Correct. Okay. You would have to make a, something so dense mm. as to not be able to be useful to you. 
Mm. But your technologies are moving forward and they will start to understand how to make lighter materials at great, great densities. Mm. Thank you. Uh, there's also a question from the chat that says, what can humanity learn from the Naga people and what do the Naga want to learn from humanity? The Naga people are a very friendly and open people. You must learn from us not to fear what is ugly to you because ugly is only skin deep, but our beauty lies within in our culture, in our love for all things, and our love for God. We are considered hideous by your people, but we are of great beauty within. You yourselves to us look silly and unnatural, but we do not make fun of that or approach you as a silly, corrupt people, but we want to extend ourselves to you in prayer and in friendship whenever that time becomes available. Do you understand? Yes. I thank believe you. this is a great lesson mm. that humans need to learn. Mm. Your fairy tale called the beauty and the beast is our favorite. Hmm. So for humans on a on a time scale, have the Naga did the Naga precede humans for by a great deal of time? Or hmm. because I can imagine that we because it's very tribal for us to be suspicious of the other. You see that playing out right now on Earth in incredible ways where everyone's afraid of everyone. Everyone thinks everyone else is out to get them. So w at what moment does that sort of devolve from a uh, society? When do people really let that go? And, and, and was that ever evident within your society, considering the Naga and the humans really haven't interacted other than in this manner? Um, how, did, how did that work for you? Paranoia and neurosis of exist in all worlds. It is greater on yours because there is more of those kinds of beings sowing this thought process. So you live in fear, no matter where you are in the planet. To escape fear is to be the freest of all because many of your fears are just that. They do not come about. You're afraid you will be attacked. You are afraid that your house will be broken into. You're afraid of strangers. You're afraid of getting in the water for fear of all the different creatures there will attack. But you see, when you lose your fear, you gain great power over all the elements around you. Do you not see that? When you lose your fear, your courage takes you to greater levels of understanding and wisdom. Oh yes, there is time for caution, but caution and fear are two different things. And yes, our people experienced these kinds of things at one time, but we are not as afraid as we used to be. And we are not holding back like once we did before because we felt uncomfortable with how you perceived us. But no, we must move forward and we must let your people know how we feel and how you feel <coughs> is important to us. Does that give you some idea of yes. how we have progressed? And yes, we are more ancient than you are by several millennia mm. Do, within the within the ocean are there cities of naga or are are the naga existing within the nature how do they are they, how what is their community our look like are, are, our cities are under the floor of the ocean 
whereas the clairs and some other species build domes and things of that nature and edifices above the, the surface of the ground. Do you Apologies. understand? Yes, yes. Is it is it possible for any of that to be detected by science, science and sonar and and those type of research tools that we have? They have been determined to be there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? There is a question here. Perfect, thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara. Greetings. May I ask for you to say a prayer in your language? She asked for us to pray in our language for you. Yes, I can do that. Remember always that there are several dialects of every language, and some people speak one and others speak another. This is my dialect. It is our prayer of prosperity for you, for those outside of our own realm, the friends that we have made in the universe. That is our prayer of prosperity. For now we have rituals that include other species. This is something that we are unique in. Not many other species have rituals that interlock species and interlock friendships in this way. But we have gatherings with other species that are considered ritualistic and friendly within our galaxy and within our known universe. I would like to say something back to you. Yes. She is speaking our language and telling us she wishes us fairness and goodwill. That is the best I can interpret it. Uh, there are words there that are only used in the Naga language and sometimes are very difficult to translate. But it was a good prayer and one of friendship. Thank you. Do we still have Saina with us? This is Saina. Thank you. Saina, uh, there's a question from our YouTube chat that's from Lily Plaid that says, around 1979 in Venezuela, uh, she saw a huge snake as a child, and she was wondering, oh, huge snake like as a child. Oh, okay. She saw a snake that was like a child, a huge one, and she was wondering if that was a naga. It is possible. I would have to check the records from that area to know for sure. There are Naga under the surface of the planet, but I do not know all their places. We have not communicated like this for a while. They have evolved in different directions than us, but we are still friendly and still send out positive energies one to another. Okay, and then there's another question that says, and let me make sure I say this correctly, um, are, th are there artifacts related to the Nagas inside the unopened vault B of the Padmana, um, let me see, Padmana Basfami temple in South India? The opening of the vault has been delayed for some reason. Yes, they will find some evidences of us there. Let me, let me print it, Padmana Basfami. What? I was just re I was just repronouncing repronouncing the uh, the uh, temple. Would you do that again? 
Padma, Padmana Baha Shwami. If it's not Shwami, it's Swami. But Correct. Okay. Yes, they will find evidences of us there. There is a relic that belongs to our people that we have given as a gift to your planet when we arrived there. It is one of our skins. It's a thick skin, but it has also been made into a robe. Okay, thank you. And I'm trying to see if there's any questions. I'm not, I don't have any other questions. I do have one question. What is your, what is your position there uh, in, on your planet? What is it that you, you do? I have the position of communication with Earth is one of my positions. But that is only a very small one. I actually am in charge of gathering the all the things that are necessary for the many rituals that we have i am a ritual organizer if you will there is other words for it on our planet mm. but i am that to you and do you have any any title that we would know of why yeah uh, no That would be the title. It is unreally, it does not decipher well into human <laughs> terms, but it is the bringer of organization to the gifts of ritual life on the planet that we live. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, David has a question and then Sheer. Okay. Yes. Dave. Hello, greetings. Greetings. Wow. Very good to have you here. Um, I uh, I was curious if um, if you wore um, some dark sunglasses, it would allow you to look through his eyes to see. Is that something that would work for you? If we were it to is share with possible, but it is all right. I do not need to see you. To be your friend. Okay, very good. So glad you came today. It was very nice to hear all the interesting things and the very uh, beautiful prayer. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make uh, you aware that Sheer had a question. Um, very well. Hello again. Yes. Uh, my question is regarding magic. If uh, I know that each planet has its own unique way to uh, use magic and uh, practice in it, do you and your people know how to use the magic on our planet? The magic on your planet is usable? Yes, it is small in amounts, but it is also that we can gather magic from the universe to help us empower ourselves with magic on your planet. So that is how we see it. Also, we do find it is workable. I see. And one more question. I know that um, many years ago, magic was very available on the Earth. And then for a very long time, a time until 2012, there was no magic and then it returns. Can you tell us why there was magic and now, like, why was it? Your people, yes. Your people started to observe it as evil or negative. And so it was pushed aside by the, the positive magic doers and only used by the negative ones. Christianity and other forms of religion pushed aside magic for spirituality, whereas it could have been used side by side, but they did not use it that way. 
they tended to look at it as a different kind of energy and one that they started to fear because others such as the reptilians and insectoids told them it was bad and they didn't the reptilians did not want people to use magic anymore because it was too powerful against them and so at some point it became a negative force to those humans that were living on earth and now it is coming back into a positive outlook Okay, um, but we are not the only species on the planet. There is you, there are the entire Galta uh, races, so don't they get a say about it? If they practice magic in a positive way, can they, could have uh, maintained your it? People, even though your people believe what they want to believe. We can tell them it's good, but if we show our face, they will think it's not good because that is what they are taught about us. ugliness so they are your people are very weak-minded in some ways not to be offensive but they believe in fear and they believe it overcomes many good things of course you are coming out of this belief system and you have a hard time understanding why others would believe like this but remember You are of a different ilk at this time than the masses. Yes, but the question was a, a different one. I spoke about there are humans on Gaia and there are many different races. Of course. More advanced. They are not allowed to interfere with your belief systems. No, I'm not. I will... try to redirect the questions once again if magic was diminished by humans a uh, thought process and was came down to zero percent but we are not the only ones on the earth there are many other species like yourself that do practice magic so how is it that the earth diminish its magic even though there are those that are on the planet In a lot of you know in masses that do practice magic how come that we are the ones that made magic disappear because since the time when I speak of everything is in all the aliens were mostly in fourth dimension not in your third dimension there are some that came in the third dimension and practiced magic and did several things but your people saw them as gods and They did not record they did not see it as magic but they saw it as godlike activity and so they did not uh, understand the magic of aliens because it was different than that of the magic of humans and therefore it was not seen the same as what humans were doing for magic okay thank you very much you are welcome you Can, could you also agree that when it comes to magic that it wasn't that magic disappeared from the planet but it became accessible it became inaccessible to people without the sort of knowledge but that knowledge was hidden for a very reason in order to preserve it and uh, and to make sure that that the people that knew how to access it were worthy of accessing it and and not abusing it this is true as well yeah yeah No. it's it's kind of like the whole thing of the argument yeah. about why it is the way it is and why it had to go and why it is coming back okay but the arguments are prophesied in galactic prophecies and that man in the dark ages became a fear-based being Does Jim need a drink? I do not know. I feel really tight in my throat. They said he needs a drink. Is that better for you? Yes. Here. 
I have I a question. More relief than it brings me. I have a question, Saina. I would like to confirm what I heard from my dragons that you are a warrior princess. Is that accurate? I do not like the title princess, but yes, it does relate to who I am. Royalty matters little to me, but the fight for goodness is my major goal. And yes, if you want to call me warrior, a warrior in very positive ways, but not a warrior that destroys, no, but a I'm... warrior that fights against the negativity. Of course, we are both very similar, so you know what I mean. It is a spiritual warrior, of course, what we are talking. Another confirmation, what I would like to, maybe you can clarify it. Uh, Warwick, uh, my friend from Council of Nine, uh, told me that I am a, a white witch, which on uh, right now doing my stuff. And I did not ask him, I forgot to ask him what exactly I am doing as a white witch on Gaia right now. You are not doing anything yet. Oh. Not as a white witch. You have, that has come through, through past ages. But you are not really acting on that. You are more acting, putting your magic into your healing. And so that is your healing efforts. If you want to say that you have uh, sent your magic into your healing, then that would be appropriate. I understand completely. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't see any other questions uh, going forward. Very well. Uh, I do have a question. It's Micheline again, if I may. Yeah. Um, well, this will be maybe on the lighter side of things. It's just that listening to you speak, it makes me think of the Harry Potter movies. I don't know if you are aware we have cinema. <laughs> and I mean, I, I've read these books and seen the movies several times. I have children. And the main character speaks some sort of serpentine language. Is it a language? Do you, do you know about it? I have watched these things. Snakes are portrayed as evil beings. Yes. But I am here to tell you that as a snake being and as a being part of a snake civilization, we have overcome all our darkness. Not all of it, but a great deal of it. And these visions of us, these assumptions of the snake culture are from your very early biblical references of serpents in the Garden of Eden. And we are sad to say that many still follow that line of thought. And because there are poisonous snakes on your planet, although they are not intellectual at all, they are still feared and looked at as negative beings. We, coming from another area of the universe, are here to tell you that we can be very beautiful and positive. And yes, perhaps my voice is deep and perhaps the voice of snakes does sound similar one world to another. But that does not mean the attitude behind it is the same. Yes, I agree. I, my question was pertaining a little bit about this author, J.K. Rowling. How did she tune into your language? Did she really? I think that mm -hmm. the language that is spoken there is nonsensical, no. meaning that you, she might have a few of the words, but she does not put them together correctly. Okay. It is a fantasy world. Yes, I just thought it was 
I, I was I just before Sheer asked the question about magic, I was just thinking about this and I just thought I would ask out of curiosity, I suppose. Thank you very, very much. Well, that is all. It is a good question because many feel that snakes are still dangerous and they are on your planet. There are dangerous ones and there are, there are harmless ones that do help the environment. They are there for a reason. But yes, us, we are the species that are not dangerous. Of course, there are some portions of our population that would be considered still poisonous to you, but we do not use that in our life any longer. I am aware that shamans, they see you as wisdom teachers. We do have a great wisdom. They, they are the ones that have really contacted us. They are the ones that know who we are. They are the ones that have seen the true Naga and the Naga spirit. Thank you for this. You are welcome. Thank you. Is it not true that in almost every religion that is not Christianity, the snake is revered as the wise, the giving of knowledge, the protector, the enlightener uh, of it all is, of uh, the people? And that is because we have visited long ago. Mm. And that has been perpetuated by your holy Indian books and mm -hmm. some of the books from Africa and South America. Yeah. Yes. And within the, within the Indian indigenous people, yes. even within our DNA, uh, DNA strands and also our medical, uh, the snake is what is uh, revered there. So. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, I think that is the end of all the questions for you. And we do appreciate it. Well. I shall go. There are others waiting to speak. Thank you, and please come again. Yeah. May God's breath breathe life into all you do. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. To Kerr, Elijah, is that you? Who is that? <laughs> this is Grindel. I know. I just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I am surprised you said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? You don't recognize me by now? God. Well, I, didn't, I didn't want you to think we'd gotten too, uh, too yeah. used to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Too used to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, greetings. Yeah. Yes, I'm here now. Um, I heard someone call me. Yes. I don't know exactly why, but I'm available since it's Saturday. <laughs> so... Um, who did My, request Grendel? Who was that? I don't remember, to be honest. I think it was Christine. Christine. Christine, do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just going to ask them yeah. about um, greetings and blessings. Ask you about Gold Event. You're on the know. What? You cut in and out, Christine. Do it again. Oh. I was going to ask you um, about um, how's the world coming along since uh, 
Yeah. Get, yeah. News and not real news. Yeah. Yeah. It's full of fear. Like I said before, there's so much, there's so much anticipation of, of, uh, of things being done, uh, bombs being sent to different places. There's rumors and rumors of all kinds of negativity around your planet. That's seems to be the way that things are run here is that uh, they listen to all the uh, horrible news and forget about the good stuff because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, but they, uh, they're worried about the bad stuff. So I have to go in and try to help the government that I'm working with see a more positive side. But they sort of look at me like I have uh, two heads. Well, I only have one, but inside the body, I guess there's two. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, the thing is, they don't understand the peaceful idea the way they should. They don't in, engulf it. They don't embody it. They see it one way where it is actually so different than how they perceive peace. Peace is a weakness to them in some ways. They think that if they're at peace, they're, then everybody's going to be wanting to disturb that peace. But we have to start making the world a more peaceful place in, in all ways. And that means everybody in it must start to understand what peace really is. And that's like not arguing with everybody, not pushing your point of view on everybody, not telling everybody how they should live and not telling everybody what you think is true because your truth is different than others. You may want to help someone get through a problem by telling them your truth, or you may want to help someone with your truth, but there are some of those truths out there that are just above people's heads that they don't get. So be normal, be human, be compassionate, be wise, use wisdom. Some of you are not doing the wise thing. You're just letting everything, uh, people can't comprehend who you are because you're too far above them. So be wise in how you present yourself so that you can actually help people. Wisdom will help people, but overloading them with uh, things you can do and thought processes doesn't help them. I think you know what I mean. Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, is there anyone in your room that has a question for Grendel? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. Who? Go ahead. Barb. Barb. What? What? I'm just going to ask. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I was going to pretty much ask you the same thing that Christine just asked you. Yeah, what? I was going to ask you the same thing that Christine just oh, asked you. Oh, she, she was going to ask me the same thing you asked, Christine. Yeah, so. that was it. So that was it. Yeah. All right. I was here for a reason. Let me tell you something else mm -hmm. that I'm learning about humans as they change their mind a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I would like you to be steadfast in who you are. Some people will, they'll read something or they'll oh, think about something and all of a sudden, they're going down a whole new mission. They're changing their mind about who they are. They're trying to find out something else and they're, they're confusing themselves. Resonate with what you are reading. Resonate with what it is that you're supposed to do. Resonate and m meditate on all the things that are around you because if you get confused in your mission, that's not going to help anyone either. It's not going to help you either because you're going to be going, I'm not sure if I should believe this or believe that or whatever. 
Some of you have been on a roller coaster ride of learning, which is wonderful. But remember, there are many philosophies that are similar but have a different point of view. So therefore, remember that you as an individual are to be yourself and become more of yourself than anybody else. So if you're confused by how somebody else is acting or somebody, what else somebody else is doing, so, sort of disregard that and say, is that who I am? Who you are is important because it dictates your mission. You must know who you are before you can tell anybody anything about themselves or do any teaching or spread any wisdom or find any, uh, give any true love and guidance. You must know who you are in yourself and you must love yourself. You must know all these things. So a lot of people are going out trying to tell people about who they are and what they're doing, but they're, they are not themselves sure of who they are. I'm seeing that a lot, just to let you know. They're, they have 10 different philosophies in their head, but they're trying to tell you which philosophy you should be following. It doesn't work that way. Mm. You should be true to yourself. Find yourself and solidify yourself, strengthen yourself, be your, who you are. And then your example will be an example of truth and be an example of wisdom and be an example of light, be an example of love, be an example of healing even. Because those people that know themselves, every single person that knows themselves has a healing effect on others. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. A healing effect. Like Karen, you have healing effect on other people. I can mention several names are here that have a healing effect on other people because of who they are, of how they act of the attitude they give, of love, an unconditional love. And they don't argue with people, or they don't fight with people, but they allow their thoughts to come forward. They allow other people to be who they are. And then they say, they show them the example of love, truth, and wisdom. And they don't have to argue with them because their example teaches these things. Their example teaches love, wisdom, and understanding, compassion, and truth. They don't have to go and correct people. They don't have to argue with people. Their example tells the story. Do you know people like that? I'm sure you do. Those are the people that you want to be around. Those are the people that you can't get enough of because they are the ones that are living their own destiny. They're living for a reason. They're having a mission on the earth and they are actually doing something positive that is making inroads to others and uh, teaching others how to live a proper life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't really get on a soapbox too often. <laughs> we have a few we questions, Brendel. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Share. Okay, and then Lila. Lila. Yeah. Hey, Grito. Greetings. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Well, you see the news and you see that every day there is a truth and then someone bombs someone and we get into the entire cycle of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, basically, 
Uh, I, I do think it's because of the coming election in 2019. Yeah. Um, let me tell you this. I'm just finishing my uh, final exams and I'm going on spring break and there's no way in hell that they're going to call me to reserve in duty because of their political uh, propaganda. And if you could speak with my contacts, you know who they are. Of course. I've been speaking to your contacts all along there, Sheer. So um, where I am, I'm. this is... The reason why I got on that soapbox for that is because the people around me are trying to push agendas off on other people that they don't even believe in. So that is what made me do that. And and um, and they're not being themselves, but they are. Um, they do know that they have to protect those that are getting educated and those that are uh, moving forward in Israel. So it is that they will, you will not be called. And if you are called, you will not get to go. Well, they just moved me from my primary unit. So I'm basically not in a good situation with them. I'm doing a lot of uh, different stuff to not go to reserve and duties because of that. So I will appreciate it if you can like speak I'll with them and tell them. Yeah, they listen to me to a certain extent. You and uh, my contacts, if you can like tell them there's no way in hell that you're going to call him to reserve in duty, yeah. and not after you moved him from his primary unit, so there's no way in hell that he's going to cooperate with you unless you're going to move him back there. Yeah, well, I, I don't have much jurisdiction over their final decisions because I'm in middle management the thing is, I have sent messages already uh, to let them know certain people should not be uh, uh, called. Oh, okay. This... I have already done what I need to do. I've already done that. Well, so, that's very appreciated. And I'm not yeah. that worried. I can see through why this is happening. I'm pretty sure that after the 2019 uh, election, there's going to be another for very oh, uh, uh, years yeah. like we just had so <laughs> it's unpredictable sheer it really is it's unpredictable okay but, well, uh, thank you very much and everything that you do i know about the things that you do and it's so much appreciated thank you thank you for that. no problem thanks okay go ahead leela greetings grendel i have Great. a few Yes, I have a question. Did you bait in the yellow mud lately? Did I do what? Bait in the yellow mud. Oh, when I get back to my planet, I always roll around in the yellow mud. Of course. Yeah. That's I don't get there very often recently, but mm -hmm. I will be going back for a little while, uh, probably in December of your time. That's soon. Yeah. So you are going to be clean for the uh, holiday, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, on the uh, 26th of July, when the Lion Portal opened, I opened, yeah. I had a dream with a red dragon, and that was my first dream in this life. So I was really uh, surprised because I'm connected with dragons, but I never dreamed. I dreamt on that day, and do you know the meaning of it? Now, the meaning I do not want to say in front of anybody else. So that uh, will have to be a time we'll get together with. Uh, uh, we will get together in December in the mud, you're saying? Uh, well, I'll tell you what the meaning is, but not in front of everybody. I know. Can I see you? Can I go out of my body and go with you in the mud on your planet? Is that possible? Everything's possible, dear. Go in the astral. Well, that's what we can talk about it then. Yeah. So, yeah. Wonderful. Right. Okay, so second question is, it is also something strange or unusual happen. It, I was out of my body when I was asleep, and I felt entities, uh, positive uh, male, and they were... They were talking to me in, uh, they were giving me words in their language and I tried to pronounce 
and even if I was half asleep, I was talking to them and I said, it's impossible to pronounce this. And this, and they give me a symbol and the symbol, it was very similar to Kalask, Kalask yeah. group. It was yeah. not a completely, but it was like the, you know, like the symbol. So can you tell me who, who are they, who, what was, was happening? Well, you were open up to a part of the universe that not many people get to see or hear from. And they, they don't communicate because their language is so difficult. And their translators um, are, have to be uh, modified before they can speak to humans. But you heard them in English? No, they were giving me words in their language, like they wanted me to repeat those words. And I said, no way I can pronounce this. Correct. So they but are who are they? Who are they? What species are they? They're a, they're a reptilian species from uh, Andromeda 12. There's a, they're way out there. And they're just now making uh, their inroads toward this solar system. Great. What did they want it from me? They wanted you to be someone that understood them, but they that you weren't able to. So, hmm. do they need something from me to do? Well, they're trying to get in touch with several humans that they think might be able to understand them. Since you have a great deal of reptilian in your background, they thought maybe you were one person that could help them, but you weren't able to. So they're going to other people that have high reptilian hybridization and know some of the languages and they were, they're going to try to communicate and uh, try to get their uh, communicators and translators in line for when they get to this solar system. Okay, I'm, I am glad that I felt something. So that is like a progress for me. So I'm really happy. Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. Get yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there, is there another question in your in your room, Grendel, or no? I don't think so. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Um, we don't have I any got... questions anymore in our rooms either. All right. Um, I have a question. <laughs> I actually write things down, but on the Hangout, I don't see we. I don't think. Oh, I see. You see. Seen. You're not getting. You're not in our. You're probably not on your computer. That's why it's not showing this chat. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. All, right. Um, all right. Well, pleased to meet you, Grindel. This is my first time speaking with you. Greetings. And what's your name? My name is Micheline. Ah, Micheline. I've heard about you. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, the Minister of International Development was in Israel and Palestine in yes. late July. Yeah, yeah with staff members yeah from canada yeah from canada and yeah. i remember you saying earlier that uh, peace is seen as a weakness and i'm wondering do they see peace as it could be attacked so they stand their ground about being on the defensive well i i should have uh, embellished on that they see peace as a weakness if they're yeah. not in charge oh. um they see that they want peace, but they want to be in control when okay. peace happens. And so does everyone. <clears throat> you, you see it in every situation. Uh, the Russians want to have peace, but they want to be in control. United States wants to have peace, but they want to be in control. Israel wants peace. They want to be in control. So uh, you have to understand their point of view from this. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't re really answer that question. Can you ask it again so the people hear it? So, no, I'm just. Uh, it's just that you said that peace was seen as a weakness. It so is. So forth, so forth. Then, would this yeah. mean they stand their ground about being on the defensive because they feel that peace could be attacked? Of course, that's exactly it. Okay. That uh, peace is not always honored. Let's put it that way. You even have your treaties, you have your uh, your defense packs and all that, but they're not always honored. They're not always uh, tight. And so even with a treaty, they're still on the guard because they're not always 
done in out of truth and understanding, but sometimes done to uh, take attention away from the negative things that they're doing behind the scenes. So this is the the mentality of the politics of the earth is that oh yeah we'll make this treaty but then we're gonna uh, build our defenses just in case they break it or mm. if they do something wrong we'll break it so it's a matter of power it's a power thing yeah even well, in treaty yeah it's a power struggle yes always now, what I thought was interesting is that they were there during the lunar eclipse. Oh, yes. A very strong energy time. Mm -hmm. And they were so, talking about peace. Of course, they're... Canada is neutral, as you know. Mm -hmm. So they are not involved. So they can say pretty much whatever they want um, and, and not, be, not be offending anybody. I mean, they, and they wouldn't do that anyway, but... They're very diplomatic and they say things very nicely. I was, I happened to meet them. They were interesting and very nice people, actually. Um, yes. Did you meet the chief of staff to the minister? Yes. Very, okay. very well spoken, very intelligent, um, and very cautious with his words. Very cautious. And um, I saw that, and I was going, hmm, he'll get along well, because he will not say anything out of line at all. So, And he didn't, of course. No, he's, well, he's very well read. Uh, I know him and, personally. Yes, so. Very intelligent. I, I saw that. He chooses his words very carefully, because he is, like you said, well read. He sees what a misplaced word can do. And mm -hmm. that is something that a lot of people should learn. Misplaced words can be so destructive because it can be so misunderstood, taken the wrong way, etc. Now, but are the missions the wrong way? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Um, yeah. Are the Canadian missions over there helping in any way? Um. Yes and no. They are helping with the understanding that uh, this country, Canada, has never been at war. It's a peaceful place. They have their, they, they are neutral, and there might be something to that. But on the other hand, Israel has never been in that place and sort of doesn't understand it. They've always been a part of the 12 tribes, if you want to call it that, in the Mideast. Mm -hmm. They've always been at war and at odds with one another. They always have their uh, separate beliefs, and their belief is the only belief that matters. I'm going back to uh, very basics. But, I'm, but you see, so they do not understand that kind of freedom and and uh, warlessness because they've never been a part of it and so it doesn't seem real they 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 always question it and they're suspicious of the Canadians that they have another agenda but they what is it you know what I mean they don't just don't, can't figure it out so uh, they are suspicious of all those countries that are neutral and do not have, a warlike agenda or a, an overtake agenda. They're, they look at them as weak. So they look at uh, Canada as a weak country because it doesn't stand up for itself in, in many ways. So, But they respect the fact that they're at peace. So there's conflicting thoughts about Canada. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell me that I could relay to this chief of staff that could help the cause? You can tell him this. Well, you can tell him what I just told you. Yeah. They don't understand peaceful nations. They don't understand neutrality. So they look at that as sort of a weakness and a uh, something that they can't really understand. Uh, so they they don't really know how to deal with Canada. 
So they sort of just let you alone. Do you understand that? Yes. But I, I know what drives the minister and the staff. I mean, these are people who want to make a difference and they work yeah. very, they, they work tirelessly, very long hours. Of uh, course. On the, you know, I mean, 24-7. Um, Absolutely. And they're very intelligent. They're well-spoken. Like I said, they're very diplomatic. They have great uh, thought processes about peace, about how the world is, because they're looking at it from a peaceful uh, agenda and one that's never been at war. Uh, and they're not really allies to anybody, even though they are. Mm -hmm. But um, they've never really had to do anything very vicious in their entire uh lives as a nation so they have all these very kind thought processes that they can give to the israeli government but yet the israeli government is focused on a coming war and when you have somebody coming in with all these peaceful thought processes and all these let's why can't we be friends ha ha is uh they they sort of look at that as you you're you don't know who we are. You don't understand what's going on here. You don't understand that we've been at war for centuries and we always will be. There is no way to to bond us. We are we are we've tried to do that hundreds of times and we are not getting along. And it looks like we never will. So they sort of listen to the say, uh, what the Canadians say and go, okay, yeah, right. Okay, nice. Yeah, I said, bye-bye now. Yeah. Bye. So um, do you understand that? Oh, yes, I do. I mean, afterwards, I get to know a little bit what went down there. And um, they're that always sound hopeful. About right? We, oh, yes. Now you're right on. I, I mean, you've hit the, the nail right on the. It's just. Um, What's the next step? What can we do to be effective? The next step is to be a little bit more um, aggressive in what you say to them. Now, I it will just show that they uh, that you have a little more character. They're very diplomatic. They're very soft spoken in many ways, and they don't argue with anyone. But I think that whenever something is said that they don't agree with, they just are quiet. They don't, they would say, well, we uh, think of, uh, uh, you know, they would sort of stutter over that and try not to cause any problems. Instead of saying, well, I really, I really don't agree with that. I think you're absolutely wrong. They don't do that. They just sort of say, well, we can't change your minds. What is a, what's the point of uh, causing any problem with us? But they need to stand their ground and be a little more aggressive when they do talk to these people because that's what they understand. You don't, you don't tell a problem child, oh, that's, you be good. You're, you're all nice. How do you treat a problem child? You have to be aggressive because that's what they understand. It's not that you're being negative. You're dealing with them in their understanding of what needs to happen. And that is what Canada needs to do with Israel. They need to speak to them on their same terms, and they just don't do that. Like I said, you don't talk to an aggressive child. Now they're there. Take care. I'm sure you're going to be a good boy. You have to be more aggressive and firm because that's what they understand. Not out of hatred, not out of anger, but out of the understanding that they must know how to move forward and succeed. And sometimes it takes an aggressive thought process. Not, I don't say hateful or nasty or anything of that nature, but aggressive is different. Do you, does that make sense to you? She dropped for just a moment, but she just came That's back. Okay. 
<laughs> she can go back and listen in the uh, in yeah. the replay. Michelle, yes, I will. Move on. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. It was just interesting how I was cut off right at that moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you hear Fantastic. what I said? No, I, 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 no, I missed the whole thing, but I will listen to the recording. Thank you so much, yeah. Randall. It was All right. Very good. Very good. Thanks. Okay. All um, right. There are some questions in the chat. Of um, course. Salem yeah. asks, he asks, uh, how do you see the probable, you're talking about uh, Canada and Saudi, but this is also Israel-Palestine. He says, how do you see a probable solution for the Israeli-Palestine conflict? I think you 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 uh, maybe touched on you're, it. Maybe there was never yeah. going to be a solution. Well, no. I think there but, can be, okay. but there is no one in a position that – at this time that talks the way that both sides will listen. Does that make sense to you? Now, in order for there to be peace in the Middle East, you must take all their belief systems and acknowledge all of them in some way as right, as good, as part of the world expanding and being a positive influence whereas that has not been done no one can knows enough about each of the 12 tribes and their religions to actually bring them together and say look this is what you believe this is what you believe this is what you believe and these are are the similarities and guess what they are all very similar but there's a few things here but this is the problem. None of them will relinquish any part of what they believe, not one iota. So what they believe is right and no one else is. And that's the problem. They cannot compromise. They cannot compromise. You need someone that knows how to talk to everybody about all the things that are the same about their peoples and bring them together that way because there will be no compromising when you talk about their sameness you understand that yeah. yes <clears throat> yes that is the only way that i see that you can bring them together talk about all the ways they are the same and there will be even some of them that will argue about being the same as as the other ones but they will it has to be undeniable it has to be a points that they cannot argue with and there are those points and you're going to have them some of them stand up and walk out because they don't want to hear it because they want to stay at odds but there will be enough people that know and understand that there are definite similarities that they will listen at least for a while mm. yeah yeah thank you for that um ecclesiast 888 is asking he says greetings grendel he says what are the percentage of atlanteans and other ethereal civilizations that Volunteered for the human experience, human vessel, approximately 375,000 years ago. Thank you. Quite a few. This is, a, but they're not all here right now. There's some coming in the next generation and the next generation. And some came in the past generation as well. But this generation is one of the most important ones. And I'll tell you why. Which generation it, would that be this one? What, what year? Born. This is the generation of the beginning of the ascension. Okay. And this generation is important, most important, because the fire has to be started and the fire has to continue to burn. And that's, you're having a great deal of struggle with that. Of course, the fire is still burning, but there are so many out there that are fighting it and trying to put the fire out. But with these people that are before me and others, that are light-minded, love-minded, peace-minded, they will continue to keep that fire burning. And don't give up that fight because 
you will win. I tell you, you will win. Can you clarify again what the generation is? Is it the people that are 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old? What no, it's, this is whoever's alive in this generation uh, is the people that are working on keeping the uh, ascension alive. So, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, you could be coming up, you could be five years old and coming into the understanding of what's happening, or you could be 20 years old and, and waking up, or you could be 50 years old and spreading your, uh, doing your mission or whatever it is. This is a very important time to keep that ascension fire burning. Do you think we're hundreds of years off? I, I cannot tell you that. And I'll tell you why. Why? Uh, if I told you an answer to that question, it would change the way you work toward the future. And I will not do that. Okay. I, I, I hold the opinion that it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It, far it, off we it are. matters, but it doesn't matter. It, But it does matter. That if some people have that, you see, there are a lot of people that put things off to the last minute. <laughs> And um, you don't want to be one of those people. <laughs> I think I think people lose their motivation believing something's going to happen tomorrow when it's really exactly. not really possible. So I don't want to. I don't want anybody to move lose any motivation for the future because I think it's very important. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah. There's another question, and let me just see. Oh, Leela had a question. She wanted to know. What is the meaning to be born on noon moon? On noon moon? That's what you mean? Oh, new, new moon. The new, new moon. moon. New moon. <laughs> today. The new moon today. Like today. Usually that's an ascended master time. Like, um, there are those that are, that try to, uh, bring their energy in with their birth as well. And this gives them a good start, gives them a greater energy to move forward with from their birth time. Also, it it, it's part of their horoscope. I know a lot of people think horoscopes are silly or whatever. There is some parts of that that are apparently powerful and some parts of that that do tell the truth but you have to know exactly what you're doing earth horoscopes are bullshit so um i'm sorry to say because your numerology is off all, all the, your numerology on earth is also crap so um it has effect because you believe it you put your belief system into it but if you really want to go to the universal numerology then universal um uh Yes, the zodiacs and things. It is from your point of view as a planet, but each individual, it's it has nothing to do with time or dates or anything like that. It has to do with distance and energies that are pulling on the earth at that time, pulling, and that's why they choose these particular times to be born. They choose planetary positionings because of the energies that coming are energies and distances that are coming in, but it has nothing to do with time. And a lot of people put that birth date thing on there and do all the numbers. That's nothing to do with that. If the numero if the numerology is off on Gaia, so that is a wonderful news for Illuminati and Cabal who are using those numbers. Well, the thing is, remember this. People have put their belief systems into these numerologies and make them work. <coughs> Hold on one sec. It's open. Your belief system has a lot to do with what works for you. Does that make sense to you? Of so course. you take this obsolete numerology system, put your belief system into it, and it will work to a certain extent. It won't be 100%, of course, but it will work 
to a certain extent because your belief system is so strong about that. So that that is the proof how powerful our mind is. That's all. Correct. Yeah, that is true. Thank you. You Linda. are able to manipulate your surroundings, and many people say, "Create your future, create your destiny, create where you you know create everything around you." So that is part of that. Yes. So you're saying all the ge ge uh, geometria and all of the uh, the correspondences between numbers and letters and oh no 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 your uh, mathematics is fine but the correlation of a date like what the day you were born mm. the num numerology the of that you don't need you don't need that at all right okay. everything that is about the day you are born is about energies and distances and movement and all these things it is not about those numbers that you put on it. It's it's the distant number that counts. It's the movement numbers that count, not the day. Because remember, time was created by your people right. for a 24-hour day and all that. That's all manipulated. That's all for your organization. That's all for something that doesn't exist anywhere else in the universe your time is your time you created it you live in it your number numerology with birth dates and calendars and things of this nature was created for your planet and time does not exist that way on the moon you would have to have a totally different calendar on mars a totally different calendar on the sun a totally different calendar so you understand that you created these n numbers and this calendar system and these uh, numbers do not really correlate to reality as far as the universe is concerned so within the earth system they they're correct but with the, correct. but yes. outside the earth system they aren't correct correct understood Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, there's a question from the ch <laughs> Sheer. One second, Sheer. Let me go go to bed. There's a question yeah. in. Uh, well, no, Sheer. You ask your question first, and then we'll go back to the chat. Go ahead, Sheer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Grindo. Greetings. Well, you just spoke about calendars, and you spoke about calendar on the sun, and that gave me an idea for a question. We spoke with another being. And she said that there are many different kind of species that live in a very high pressure on the deep of the ocean. Correct. Are there any uh, known race that was able to develop on a sun surface? Is there such thing? There are there are races of beings that lived in sun areas. Yes, there's not a, a a species in every sun, but there are species in some suns especially the older red dwarf suns and things of that nature there are species that live within those realms yes and they will have to leave there at some portion because as the sun's uh nova or supernova and um or die down and collapse into black holes they will someday have to leave their area and go somewhere else that will be helped and facilitated by creator beings in the universe so that well that'll that'll come around so so you're saying that they are are they biological or are they energy entities because of course of they are they're of course they are they are not in this dimension they are in other dimensions because of course um other dimensions exist so but they they are in other dimensions but when their when their place of origin collapses they must move forward either they go back to the oversoul the spirit whatever and uh, then are reborn elsewhere yeah so there's no third, there, do that too so there's yeah. no a uh, third density biological beings with a physical body that actually can live on a sun uh, no, no, no. I, I didn't say that all things are possible 
I'm sure that there are some third dimensional people that you could probably see in some of the suns, but your son has a civilization that is not third dimensional. Okay. Well, I have learned something new today. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Grinda, we have a couple more questions. Uh, Dave has a question. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Grindel. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about the sun, and I thought it was uh, yeah. interesting because I had a thought process that as a planet increases its vibration, uh, as the planet ascends, then it, all planets will eventually become suns. Is that true? As they become enlightened? Oh, well, it's a possibility for a planet to become a sun, but it's not likely. Let me tell you what ascension is all about. Ascension you con is constant and continuous forever. As you ascend, you get closer and closer to the uh, vibration of God. That's what ascension is. Mm. <coughs> Hold on. Yeah, that's better. Um, you get closer and closer to the uh what god the uh, vibration of god is you will never reach it but you get closer and closer because he does he keep evolving of course he keeps evolving and he just he makes more kinds of energies and more kinds of situations and continuous uh continuous evolution so as you ascend you become closer and closer to the mind of god and the uh, the element of God, the vibration of God, the <clears throat> the vibe, and that will eternally go on. So, if the planet itself rises, it will rise through to the dimensions first. First, it asks, "You're a third dimensional planet." On top of that third dimension, there's fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions. On top of your planet right now and other species living on your planet right now in other dimensions that you cannot see but this is their home world also and you cannot see their home world but this is the core of their home world as well because Gaia is here mother Gaia is here and that is a life force as well now I was, uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I was just gonna say um because like as you increase um frequency say from solid to liquid to gas so yes. you increase temperature as well so this you can, yes. has something to do with global warming in this it depends on how the planet evolves some planets are destroyed have you noticed that mm -hmm. so they don't get to become a sun if you have to maintain a certain vibration and grow it continually for millions of years before you become a sun. And some do not make it that far. And some are not meant to make it that far. But that is what God has in mind. I, I can't tell you all about that. But he, his mind is greater than ours. And I can't understand why some planets explode and become an astral field asteroid field some become a sun millions of years later and some die just die it it is the way it is uh thank you so much you're welcome <laughs> okay um uh, there's a question from the chat Ooh, yeah yeah um it's saying can you please give some insight on what et groups are helping out in southeast asia um there's yeah, seems yeah. to be a lot of dark stuff going on over there. Well, like there's the a lot of dark stuff going <laughs> over in Southeast Asia. So dark, we lost Jim. <laughs> Did, am I the only one who lost him? It is too dark. Yeah, I lost too. <laughs> it was too dark. We lost him. too dark. <laughs> Jim's frozen. What? He's frozen. Okay, let's just give him a moment. Oh my. Well, then you know. Then you know, then you know. So I, I promised I would do you good. <laughs>
Take it away. <laughs> I'm not really going to play the ukulele. Uh, Sam, next time we're not going to answer these questions, these dark questions. Is he back? No, he doesn't. No, nope, not yet. Okay. Well, everyone has to help me remember Sheer wants to ask next week for some beings that are on the surface of the sun. I think that was a good idea. So I, I put a note in the in the group to uh, remind me to ask that remind me to ask him to uh, yeah ask. So I read my about picture, I look frozen. My picture is it frozen or no? No. Yes. Okay. Move. Yeah, it is. No. No. The dog is no. not moving. Yeah. I think I'm frozen as well. <laughs> I, so, I was reading about the sun 20 years ago, and that's supposed to be seven circles. The planet, the sun, is not hot. That is only the aura, what we are seeing, like it's hot, but completely is people live on, on seven, there are seven circles on different dimensions. So that was uh, information channeled like 30 years ago, and I read it 20 years ago. About the sun. Oh, all is frozen. Is everyone here? Yep. 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 You can't hear me. Nope. I yeah. can I can't see you, Karen, but I hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Well. I can ask. Oh, there you are. You're coming back. Well, what was that? Maybe there was a chronal ejection from the sun. Well, actually, my question was about the solar eclipse of today. Isn't it happening now? Well, in some parts of the world, yes, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, it's not dark here. It's still it's it's daylight, but it'll be daylight here till about nine thirty at night. It's ten till seven at night. Yeah, um, me it's quarter, it's about 10 to 1 here in the afternoon. I don't know where, I didn't, to be honest, I'm not sure where the eclipse is going to be showing. Uh, they lost power in New York. Wow. Oh. So, Sam, no more, no more questions. <laughs> I guess that was an answer we're not going to get. So just, we'll go ahead, we're going to sum it up now, because I, I don't know that he's going to be back, so... Why don't we go ahead and just uh, why don't we just go ahead and, and end it now? So this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. Uh, if, if someone wants to end with a blessing, is there anyone that will end with a blessing? Yes. Who's that? Uh, David. Okay, David, just one moment. So just before, um, I'll give it to you in a second. So just as a reminder, uh, this has been a paid webinar. If you would like to become a member of Human Colony, you can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you support all the activities of Human Colony, which means our lovely webinars that bring Jim on and, and the, the paid ones. We also have some nice workshops that we offer for free to everyone, uh, like the channeling workshop that's on Friday nights. You can find that via Facebook. Just look for channeling and human colony or Hukalo. And then also uh, coming up in just one week, we've got the Dansville workshop, the Ascension workshop, our third one. It'll be August 16th through the 21st. And there is still time to join. So for $400, it's five days, four nights in Dansville. It's channeling workshops, Reiki workshops, uh, channelings daily with Jim and Max, and also a lot of fun activity. So if you're interested in that, you feel called to it, please check it out. I'm about to, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> And also, please check us out at hukalo.org. We have many Facebook groups, so if you look for Hukalo, several groups will come up. You're free to join those, and we would welcome you. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit subscribe down there on that corner, wherever it is, the subscribe button. So please join us just to support our broadcast. Okay, Dave, you want to do a blessing? You ready? Yes. Okay, let me click on you. Perfect. Okay. The first one. Okay. Okay. 
May the reflection of your heart be your truest desire and you follow your heart with love and light. May all your dreams be true. Much love. That's it. Namaste. I believe you're muted, Karen. I'm just talking away. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to end with the peace mantra, which is means just may all the beings in the world be happy, and it's loka samasta sukino bhavantu. We'll do that three times, and then we'll end with three ohms, and then om. Well, we'll end with om one time, sorry, and then shanti shanti shanti. So let's do that together. Uh, and we will we'll say goodbye. So take a deep breath. Loka samasta sukino pavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. One more time. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. And all together with Om. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Much love to you, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.